Part seven was not on last year's summer homework, uh, but they requested it and they said it would have been very helpful to have had this so you guys get this additional support on your summer homework. Um, this is working with piecewise functions and continuity. Piecewise functions are functions that are different types of functions at different places on uh, different x values. So in some parts, there'll be one thing and then another part, there'll be a different type of function. So let's look at what this, this says. This says the function is 2x plus 3 when x is less than 2. So when x is to the left of 2, um, we're going to get this linear function. Then when x equals 2, so there's only a single x value, um, the y value will be negative 6. And then the y value will be the square root of x minus 2 plus 4 when x is to the right of 2. So it, it basically breaks this graph up into different parts. So let's make sure we can evaluate it. f of... I don't know why I'm over here at negative 2. That's, that's embarrassing. Uh, this was x is 2, not x is negative 2. So it's the left of 2 to the right of 2 and at x equals 2. Um, f of negative 2 says what is the x, uh, what is the y value when x is negative 2? So before we can evaluate a piecewise function, we need to decide what part we're on. When x is negative 2, x is less than 2 because negative 2 is less than 2. And so f of negative 2 is 2 times negative 2 plus 3, which is negative 1. So when x is negative 2, y is negative 1, um, and it's because we're on this, this graph right here. I'm going to let you do f of 2 and f of 7 on your own. Um, is f of, oh, now it says to graph the function. So we've got this function, f of x is 2x plus 3 when x is less than 2. So until x is 2, we've got this graph y equals 2x plus 3, and that has a, it's a linear function with a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 2. And it's everywhere that x is less than everywhere that x is less than 2. So when x gets to 2, it stops being this linear function. And instead, at x equals 2, the y value is negative 6. Notice that we use a blank circle here because this was not uh, a point on this line segment. Uh, and then when x is greater than 2, we get a square root graph um, that shifted 2 to the right and 4 up. So square root graphs start at 0, 0. It shifted 2 to the right and 4 up, um, which is nice because that's where this function starts. This is a blank circle. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 1, 2, 3, 4 is 2. And then it goes off the graph. So, so this is what this graph looks like. And it's kind of crazy. It's this weird graph uh, where there's a linear part to the left of 2, like we said there would be. There is a point at x equals 2. And then when x is to the right of 2, we get the square root graph. Um, part C is important. It says, is f of x continuous at x equals 2? And the word continuous means that you can, uh, there are no breaks in it. And, and here there is definitely a break. There's a break here and here. Um, you have to pick your pencil up to continue drawing it. And so it is not continuous at x equals 2 um, because there is a break. All right. So. Um, in calculus, we'll get more into a definition of continuity we can use during, ca during calculus, but uh, for now, uh, you should just know it means there are no breaks in the graph, no gaps. Okay, so here's this new piecewise function, and here it's going to be a linear function when x is less than 10. So there's like, okay, so here's 10, there's some linear function, and then there's this different linear function when x is greater than 10, and this one has a value c that we don't know. Okay, so we're going to evaluate uh, g of 5. Uh, g of 5, well, the first thing we need to decide is, is x less than or equal to 10? 5 is less than 10, and so we're on this part of the graph. So it's going to be 2 times 5 plus 5. We're just putting in 5 for x, which is 15. So g of 5 is 15. Um, g of 100, 100 is greater than 10. Um, so we're going to use this bottom one. Uh, so it's 5 times 100 plus C, which is 500 plus C. Uh, again, we don't know what this C is, and so this value will depend on what C is, but that's okay. And finally, it says find the one value of C that will make G of X continuous, there's that word again, at X equals 10. So the idea is there's this linear function here, and there's this other linear function that has a different y-intercept, and we want it to be continuous. And in order for it to be continuous, there needs to not be a break here. 
And in order for there not to be a break, the two y values should be the same at x equals 10. Well, the y value as you come in from the left side is going to be 2 times 10 plus 5, right? Uh, because when x equals 10, that's g of 10, uh, and so that's 25. And this y value at x equals 10 also needs to be 25, otherwise it wouldn't line up. So we need this y value to be 25. Um, and so what we can do is we can say when x is 10, 5 times 10 plus c has to be 25. So this needs to be 5 times 10 plus c. <clears throat> so we get 25 equals 50 plus c. So c had to be negative 25. The y-intercept of this function needed to be negative 25 to make them actually line up at x equals 10, which is what needs to happen for it to be continuous. So this is kind of an interesting idea, um, and if you had to use the video to help you on it, you might want to try this again and make sure you fully understand it, because it will definitely come up this year, that um, there are these two functions that meet up at x equals 10, and to be continuous, uh, when x is 10, the two y values have to be the same as each other. Uh, and it's a very similar idea in, uh, in, in number three, um, although you might need to end up solving a system of equations, I'm not sure. All right.